Hey everyone, so today I'm going to talk about a study that our research team found in the American Journal of Clinical Lipidology from a few years ago, and it's relevant to some of these cholesterol conversations and debates that we see online all the time. Um, you had an individual 13 years old, and he presented with 600, his LDL cholesterol was 679 milligrams per deciliter, which is just off the charts high. Like in a normal panel, a normal lab would have the LDL cholesterol 120, 130 milligrams per deciliter as you know dangerously elevated. Depends who you talk to online. Obviously, there's some voices who say, you know, you don't have to worry about high cholesterol. It's been debunked. We're not in that camp, right? So, so we see, you know, the study, it's a case study, um, a case study appended to a larger study, which I'll get into in a sec, but there's a 13 year old, he's got LDL cholesterol, 679 milligrams per deciliter. Now, why, why does it, why is his LDL cholesterol that high? Is he a lean mass hyper responder? Well, no, turns out he's not. So in this case, he's not on a really high fat diet. His parents haven't put him on keto. He's not experiencing seizures or anything like that. He has loss of function in, in some ABC G5 and ABC G8 genes. He's a compound uh, homozygote for a couple of SNPs that we report on uh, in our gene food cholesterol absorption panel. And um, he has a condition called cytosterolemia, which is the hyperabsorption loss of function of the efflux mechanism that pumps plant sterol out of the lumen. And you're getting all this plant sterol in the blood. So when you eat avocado, you eat nut butters, all these different types of foods and his uh, cholesterol as well. It's the same pathway, hyperabsorbing. So he has this catastrophically high LDL. They do genetic testing. They see that he has loss of function in ABC, G5, ABC, G8 genes. So what do they do? They put him on a low sterile diet, low cholesterol diet. His LDL starts to come down. They put him on a statin. His LDL comes down further. Now, as an aside, and, and look, you know, I, I wish I had the, inter the the research team here to interview to ask them why a statin if the problem is um, if the problem is absorption, why a statin? But they they put him on a statin. Uh, maybe the maybe the idea there is that you know statins do increase LDL receptor activity, so you're getting more LDL receptor activity with a statin. Put him on a statin, and the final the final move that brought his LDL cholesterol from 679 milligrams per deciliter down to 60 milligrams per deciliter was putting him on Zetia. So I did a video a few back where I talked about how I after I learned that I tend to hyperabsorb. Uh, cholesterol and plant sterile to a much milder degree than, you know, this is all on a spectrum, right? So you could have total loss of function over here. Total loss of function is your, your hyper absorbing, your, your cytosterolemia is just off the charts high. And then, but it, it, it but you could have still hyper absorption, but, but quite a bit less than the 99th percentile, 99.9th percentile of cytostrol in the blood. Um, so they put him on Zetia and his LDL cholesterol again comes back to 60 milligrams per deciliter. That, 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 that case study was published as a teaser for a larger study, which looks at over 200,000 subjects. And the headline with, with, with that study, looking again, looking at this pathway was that people, people who had LDL cholesterol of over 190 milligrams per deciliter, 4.3% of those people had cytosterol in the 99th percentile. So if you're looking at pathways and reasons why you could be, why you could be really, really, really dyslipidemic, you know, um, on a high fat, on a high fat diet, if you're getting a lot of avocado, you're getting a lot of nut butters, you're getting a lot of eggs. For some people, the, the cause of the dyslipidemia could actually be hyperabsorption. It was very interesting. And the way to find out is to do a genetic test and to go to a, a clinic like Boston Heart Diagnostics and have a sterile panel run because the sterile panel is going to show you, are you absorbing more? Are you synthesizing more? And, um, you know, we get calls and emails all the time for people out there who are like, man, my, my lipids are off the charts high. This is a pathway to explore to have in your, your, your personalized health toolkit to know maybe you lean in this direction, maybe you don't. Um, you know, there's good research that shows that, uh, you know, that in addition to ABCG8, a lot of APOE4 carriers tend to tend to continue to hyperabsorb cholesterol as well. So, so in 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 the search for uh, the reason why you may be having issues with LDL cholesterol, one place to look is the ABCG5, ABCG8 pathway, Neiman PIXI1-like protein. This this absorption pathway that brings in 
cholesterol and plant sterol. And usually efflux is out the, the plant sterol. It's temporarily absorbed. It's preferentially absorbed to the cholesterol, which is why oatmeal and, and uh, high sterile foods and even phytosterile supplements are sometimes prescribed to people because the idea is that you're not absorbing as much cholesterol because the, the sterols are preferentially absorbed and that prevents the cholesterol from being absorbed. And then the body has this efflux mechanism, which kicks that, that sterile back out. In some people, it comes it comes into the blood. Um, you know, in a future video, I, I it, when you look at the people who have had success, like publicly had success on a carnivore diet, who are very public about how they've they've really been able to, you know, at least in the short term. You know, I know some of the more famous carnivore dieters, like uh, Dr. Paul Saladino, and some of these others have have been said that they've kind of moved away from a carnivore diet over the long term because of the detrimental effects of, you know, being in nutritional ketosis for extended periods of time. And, you know, there's probably some other things like, you know, who, who knows, I, I, we've been pretty public on our on our site that we don't see that as a very healthy intervention for people over the long term. But but I think it's interesting to look at this cytosterolemia and, and sterile absorption pathway in the context of the carnivore diet. Because a lot of these people, um, like the Bell brothers and like Michaela Peterson, some of these people have complained about xanthomas and really nasty joint issues. And when you start looking up the symptoms of cytosterolemia, those are consistent with some of these, some of the, some of the people that present with cytosterolemia. So I've always wondered, you know, what's the reason why somebody would be sensitive to all plant foods? And one of those reasons, you know, it's like it could be lectin, right? Uh, but Cytosterol, plant sterol, plant fats. If you're a hyperabsorber of these plant fats, it, can, it, it has been known to cause joint issues. Um, and, 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 if, and if left untreated, it really will cause uh, a lot of health problems. So I've always kind of wondered just as a theory in the back of my mind, you know, having spoken to Amber O'Hearn and, and some of the people in the carnivore community, whether the people that have the have had the worst react worst reactions and the greatest recoveries with, um, with uh, the carnivore diet is actually because maybe they have undiagnosed cytosterolemia. So we'll save that video for another day. That's a little teaser. Thanks for watching. Thanks for engaging with this content and we'll see you on a future video.